What's up, YouTube fans? Today we're going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Comic Universe Bludgeon. So this is a retool of the Legacy version of Tarn that we got a little while back. And I saw this in store and I thought, why don't I pick this up for G. Tony? His birthday is coming up. So shout out to G. Tony. But let's take a look at this guy, which I don't normally look at everything from Legacy. But this one looked interesting. We got some nice paint here on the head. We got silver on the crest and on the sides. Silver paint for the face. Red paint for the eyes and the mouth. Orange paint across this translucent orange piece with a metallic purple Septagon logo. That's not typical. Translucent orange for the abs with silver paint. The arms are painted in this maroon. For the legs, you got green and maroon paint there. And, you know, just more than the typical for paint here. And on the back, we have this green paint on top of the translucent orange. For articulation, the head is on a rotating swivel. Or sorry, it's on a ball joint, but it's also on a swivel, so you can get the swivel up and down. The head can also move on that ball joint. You can get side to side on the ball joint. And you can rotate all the way around, so you get a lot of movement out of that head. More than I was expecting. Uh, these back bits here can rotate. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Rotate the arms all the way around. Up to there on a hinge. You have a rotation at the elbow. Single joint to elbow gets a little past 90 degrees. Wrist rotation. You have finger articulation on this, which is very, very atypical for a Voyager class figure. I just thought that was really surprising. The built in fingers there. Your rotation at the waist. Legs kick up to there with the hip skirt moving with the hips, which is kind of cool. Back to there. Up to the side. That's all on friction. Rotation at the thigh. Single jointed knee gets you well past 90 degrees. It's part of the transformation, but there's a cool thing here. There's actually a collapsing joint. Um, I think that's pretty neat the way they designed that. That's not, again, not a typical thing you'll see on Hasbro figures. Ankle tilt back and forth, pivot forward and backward. And for the accessories, you get quite a bit here. You get these two blasters done with translucent orange plastic with orange paint, silver paint, and black paint. Those look really nice. And these will plug into the forearms. You can just plug them right here and here. And you have that look. I think that's pretty nice. Uh, and you can also, there's another peg here, so if you wanted to, you could plug it in up here. And just like any legacy figure, you could do a lot, but you can also take this adapter piece here, and we can plug these into here, and then this can plug into the arm, and you can have that look similar to Tarn. Or you could take all of this, come to the back here, fold these down, and they tab in right here on the back. And then you can take this backpack piece, and this will plug in right here. Fold these down, or you can move these up to here. And now he's got the over-the-shoulder cannons. That's pretty cool. That's probably the coolest look, in my opinion anyway, but lots of options there for those cannons. Uh, we also get, it will just kind of fix this. These do come out, by the way, so if you want to, you can remove those and you can put them other places like here. So some options on those as well. But we also get a sword here done in maroon and then painted silver and nicely sculpted. This was surprising to me for a legacy figure sword looks pretty good, but that'll fit into his hand. Um, you can open the hand and it'll still stay because it's sculpted to fit, but I just thought that was a really nice looking sword. For a quick size comparison, there it is next to the Earthrise Optimus Prime, basically the exact same height. Both are Voyager scale figures, so it'll fit in nice with the retail line. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his tank mode. And if you haven't already, remove the cannon from the back and we'll take care of that a little bit later. Come to the back here, you're going to unpeg this backpack, it's tabbed in to his shoulders. 
rotate this around and then these are going to come to the other side. Just leave that there for now. Come to the front, we can bring this head, unpeg the front chest from here, same thing. Rotate the head around. I'm going to bring this down and it's going to sit in this cavity. Uh, yeah. Then we're going to take the arms, pull those out. We're going to rotate these shoulder pads all the way around. Yeah, I just I can't seem to get it to go without falling off. Rotate this upwards. You can see there's a little tab and a slot. So get that pegged in right there on the top. So that's kind of the front of the tank. And we can take these arm pieces and take care of these. So we're going to unpeg this from here. Rotate this back. Same with this one. Rotate this back. We can flip this panel to the other side. And we want this oriented so that this tab is on the inside. So I have that like that. Right, same on this one. Rotate it. Flip this green panel to the outside and have that tab on the inside. We're going to accordion this down. So it's just going to make an L shape here. Tab this piece in. And same on this side, we can rotate this leg up. And we can actually tab these two together, fold the feet down. And same on this side, tab that together. We can come to the top here, and this is going to fit right on top. So we're going to bring this down. There you go. So it should look like that. This will come down and tab into the top there. And if you don't have this lined up, it's because you have these pieces not lined up. So get this lined in and then tab that together. And this came undone. There's a tab here. Get those pegged in on top. For the hands, you can just kind of have them like this. I think that looks the best because the side profile, but kind of have you really like. Last step here, go ahead and come to the side and open up this little panel right here. Bring this down, it's going to fit underneath here and then tab into the bottom. Same with this one, open up this piece, bring this down, tab it in. That'll kind of secure the sides. Then we're going to take this piece here, this is going to plug in right here. So there's two little tabs right here. And you want it oriented so that this peg ends up in here. Make sure this bump is on the top. Otherwise you'll have trouble fitting in here. But Go ahead and get that tabbed in. And there you go. There is Bludgeon in his tank mode. I think it looks really good. It's very intimidating. Lots of nice little, you know, weapons here. You got these guns here on the front. You got these cannons, which can rotate and they can go up and down. So that's nice. Here's the back. It doesn't have any wheels or anything on the bottom. It just has these little, you know, pegs sticking out. So it'll sit on top of those. But overall, it's a very good looking tank mode. You can store the sword here if you just plug it in anywhere really on either side. Um, symmetrically probably looks best here. But you can also put it here and here. Me personally I think it looks best in the middle. But like I said you can you can do whatever you want. And for quick size comparison there it is next to the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime medium sized tank here. Looks good with the retail line. So final recommendations on the Transformers Legacy Evolution comic version of Bludgeon. I'm going to give this a 4 to 5. I'm going to recommend it. I think this is a fun figure. It looks really good in the robot mode. I like all of the variation you can do with the weapons. It's really versatile in the robot mode. Vehicle mode also I think looks pretty good and you can kind of mount everything there. Weapon storage is always kind of a plus in my book.
But the only thing I would really complain is the ankles here. Um, it doesn't have a locking point, so it tends to sometimes fall back. I think it fell back once during the review. Um, but I think that that's that's about my only complaint there is they could have used a locking point. But other than that, it's a really good figure if you're a fan of Bludgeon or you just like this mold in general. I think it's a really good release. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.